Our top lead this evening, ladies and gentlemen, is a conversation that India needs to have. Not just women, but men as well. Have you screened yourself for cervical cancer? If you haven't, do it now. It's a gender disease that impacts women, and more importantly, it is entirely preventable. Why am I talking about it today? Two reasons. The woman on your screens is the first reason. This is Poonam Pandey, the 33-year-old actor whose death is currently a big, big talking point on social media. Her social media team today posted the news of her death on her official Instagram handle and said that Poonam has passed away in Kanpur because of cervical cancer. Post that post. There has been no word from them. Now, there are many people on social media who say that the news of Poonam Pandey's death is simply a publicity stunt. We don't know what the truth is. Our reporter in Kanpur, where she supposedly died, tells us that her family doesn't live in Kanpur anymore. They are all incommunicado in any case. There has been no funeral so far either. Then there is this video from three days ago. This is again posted on Poonam Pandey's Instagram handle, where she's seen partying in Goa. This is four days ago, actually. Her bodyguard, in fact, has been quoted as saying that she was shooting till two days ago and was fine when he met her. So, as I said, I don't know if Poonam Pandey has indeed passed away because of cervical cancer. If she has, it's very unfortunate. She was just 33 years old. If she hasn't, well, there's a huge ethical debate that will follow. But at least for now, the headline has got news channels talking about cervical cancer. As I said, this is a conversation India needs to have. Cervical cancer is the second most common cancer amongst women. 95% of it is sexually transmitted. 93% of it, ladies and gentlemen, is preventable. All you need to do is get yourself vaccinated. There are three types of HPV vaccines available. And depending on which one you take, you can take it from age 9 to 45. Of course, the best age to take it is between 9 to 14, before the onset of sexual activity. Which brings me to the second reason why I'm talking about cervical cancer this evening. Yesterday, Nirmala Sitaraman, in her interim budget speech, made a special mention of it, saying that the government is trying to get all young girls in the country immunized for cervical cancer. Listen in. Our government will encourage vaccination for girls in the age group of 9 to 14 years for preven prevention of cervical cancer. My guest this evening, Dr. Amit Kamar, is uh, an oncology expert. Joining us on the broadcast, Dr. Trupti Gilada is an infectious physician. Uh, uh, as she's joining us on the broadcast as well from Mumbai. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gilada and Dr. Kumar, for joining us this evening. Dr. Gilada, I'm coming to you first as someone who treats many people uh, who come to you with cervical cancer. Look, again, as I, I've been telling our viewers, I don't know what the truth about Poonam Pandey's death is. Her PR team is saying she has died in Kanpur. There are enough and more netizens saying we don't believe it. But I just want you to look at Poonam Pandey's age profile. She was 33 years old. By the looks of it, she was fit. Is 33 the age where you expect someone with cervical cancer to pass away? Uh, this is not based on whether the news is correct or not. I'm just trying to get the age profile of the disease here. Cervical uh, cancer is definitely seen uh, between the ages of 29 to 45 and even up to 60 more commonly. So, yes, it's very unfortunate that we see someone with a cancer that early. But uh, it's an age that we are seeing cancers at that age, especially with improved screening. Uh, and with more awareness, we are picking up cancers at an early age. So, okay. So, you're saying between 36 to 44 is when you see the most number of cases, Dr. Gilada? And therefore, the most number of deaths as well? 
So uh, you need to understand that cervical cancer is caused by HPV infection. And even though the infection is acquired a decade earlier or even 15 years earlier, it does often take that much time for the entire process from an infection to an inflammation to a cancer. And therefore, even though if the virus is acquired earlier, we often see it after 35 years of age. But of course, we do see cancers even at an early age. And therefore, even the cancer screening guidelines do recommend that we start cancer screening at around 29 to 30 years of age. Okay. Dr. Amit Kumar, you know, uh, the general belief is the government of India has spoken about immunization uh, uh, for cervical cancer yesterday. The, 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 the finance minister of the country has said that we'll try and get all young girls between the age groups of 9 to 14 immunized. I want to ask you, what about someone who's 30? What about someone who's 40? Will I understand there are different kinds of vaccines available. Do vaccines give protection slash immunity to older women as well? Or are they just effective uh, before the onset of sexual activity or in young girls? So the idea behind the vaccination is to prevent the infection or get rid of infection if they have already acquired it. It is just to build the immunity. And we understand the principle of vaccine is nothing but your own immune generation or immune cells against the virus. So most of the time we get acquired of all these infections and by the age of approximately 30, most of us get rid of these viruses. But few of them, the viruses are not able to get cleared from the body and then they tend to develop cancer. And that is where the bracket lies. But, they, but the people or these kids, they have a very strong immune system. And between the age of 9 to 14, they are very, very highly immunogenic in terms of developing uh, uh, vaccine responses. And that is why they are trying to recommend. And this, it is practically before the sexual activity is initiated, they are recommending. And I think eventually everybody is going to get vaccinated by the age 45, what we normally recommend. And there is nothing that we are stopping hmm. anybody to get vaccinated. Even post-exposure, there are data suggests that vaccine can prevent or get rid of the infection and can prevent the several cancers in all the infected cases also. Okay. So, Dr. Amit Kumar, then are you telling me that even someone who has crossed the age of 45 can get the cervical cancer vaccine and hope to be immunized slash protected by it? I ask you this question uh, because there is awareness, some degree of awareness as far as cervical cancer is concerned now. It wasn't there, say, 10 years ago or 15 years ago. So, there are entire generations right now who have not got the vaccine. Uh, that generation could be 35, that generation could be 40, that generation could be 45. Are you telling me yeah, it's perfectly so, so, okay for a 45-year-old to walk into, walk into a hospital and ask for it and be assured that there will be some degree of protection that the vaccine will offer? Yes, the answer is yes. Earlier, we were trying to promote that the cancer vaccine is given between the age of 14 to 29 or 30. Now we have extended the age to 45. Mm. And the idea is nothing but to just generate the immune cells against the viruses. Sometimes virus take a lot of time to show up the cancer. So earlier is the better, but late is never a big no. Okay. Dr. Gilada, if I, as someone in her 40s, wants to go walk into a hospital and say, I want to be immunized against cervical cancer, what are the questions I need to ask? Because there is not one but three kinds of vaccines, if I'm correct, that are available. Which one is recommended for which age group? Could you help us understand that? So basically, we have a couple of vaccines. Uh, one is uh, a uh, uh, Dr. Kumar, that yeah. question was for... Do okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Do Dr. Kumar, that question on. was for Dr. Gilada. And I'll... I, uh, no, that's okay. I'll, I'll let you come in in a bit. Yes, Dr. Gilada, go ahead, please. So we have uh, two vaccines uh, from the multinational companies, which is the Gardasil and Cervarix. And we have one of our own vaccines, which is named by the Serum Institute of India. Uh, which was uh, announced last year, and we are hopeful that sometime this year it will be rolled out. And all three vaccines cover for the four most high-risk strains. 
So HPV has several strains, hmm. and there are four of them which are known to cause most of the cervical cancers. Now, all these three vaccines do hmm. protect from these four most high-risk strains. So uh, there isn't, uh, they're all fine. All three of them are fine. Uh, a lot of it will be on the cost of the vaccine. And therefore, we are so eagerly waiting for the Serum mm. Institute of India vaccine because, of course, it will be priced much lower than the uh, uh, vaccines mm. from abroad. Uh, talking about the age, uh, two of these vaccines um, have been approved until the age of 26, and uh, Ardacel is approved even for beyond until the age of 45. Uh, we wait to see what the guidelines mm. will be for our uh, Serum Institute India vaccine. Uh, but what's also important to understand, mm. they're only talking about vaccination for women. Now, HPV is actually mm. a virus which is sexually transmitted. So when you talk about stopping the chain of transmission, we also need to keep in mind that we also need to immunize the boys. Because that's the only way we stop the chain of transmission. And therefore, all developed mm. countries vaccinate both their boys and girls. And again, uh, when boys are immunized, they are immunized from the ages of 9 to 14. Is it uh, Dr. Gilada? Or is their age for immunization a little later? It's the same. It's 9 to 14. In fact, like uh, um, the other uh, speaker described, that the immunogenicity or the ability of the body to mount an immune response is much higher in that age. And therefore, if the vaccine is taken before the age mm. of 15, only two doses are required. If it's mm -hmm. taken after the age of 15, three doses mm -hmm. are required. And it's the same for boys and girls. Okay, so it's just a... It's the same for boys and girls. And depending on which age you take it, uh, Dr. Gilada, what you're telling us, uh, will the dosage depend? It could either be two or it could be three. So I'm assuming that for people who are in their 30s and 40s, it would be a dosage of three. Dr. Amit Kumar, Dr. Gilada makes a very important point that while we focus on girls when it comes to cervical cancer, it's very important that all of us need to remember that boys in your homes need to get immunized as well. And therefore, was a mistake made yesterday then by the government of India, uh, and it could be an honest mistake. I mean, I I'm not saying it was deliberate, but then was it a mistake by the government of India yesterday when Nirmala Sitharaman said that all girls between the ages of 9 to 14 will be immunized? Now, we don't know what shape this immunization program takes. Is it universal immunization? Will it be completely free? Uh, will it be with the vaccine that, uh, uh, you know, that is being developed in India? Uh, we don't know. We don't have answers to all those questions. We'll probably have answers to all those questions in July. But then, if the government of India does launch a universal vaccination program for cervical cancer, should it necessarily then include boys as well? Well, it's a very interesting question, and definitely we would love to see that both the, both boys and girls are vaccinated equally. And as rightly said, uh, that the, it mm. breaks the chain of transmission. And uh, not only that the uh, girls are prone to develop cervical cancer, but the male or the boys are prone to develop penile cancer. It's a counterpart of it. So same thing. But the incidence of cervical cancer is too high. The emphasis was laid down to the cervical cancer. That, was, that is the reason why the first ladder was uh, taken, uh, or the first step was taken in this ladder, actually. And having said that, this is not only going to prevent the cervical cancer, but also oral cancer. The sexual habit these days, which where oral sex is also being uh, uh, taken into account, promotes oral cancers, including your oral cavity, your, your uh, oropharynx especially. Uh, these cancers are very, very important, which can be prevented just by taking vaccination mm -hmm. for both these sexes, that is male and female together. I think it's a very pertinent point what you have uh, brought out. And we, I personally and I promote that, yes, both the genders should get vaccinated uh, at the, between the age of 9 to 14 to begin with. Okay, Dr. Gilada, my final, final question is to you. Uh, we understand that cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in India. You know, there, seem to, there seems to be awareness about breast cancer. Uh, we, know, we know that screening is 
required. We know that when we go to a physician for anything, we say, please do a check for breast cancer as well. Do you find in your practice that that is not the case when it comes to cervical cancer, that we simply don't screen ourselves for cervical cancer in India? And that is a big mistake? That's, that's true uh, to a certain level where, you know, we've, we've just not thought about prevention and screening cancers as a priority in our health. Uh, so while there is a lot of awareness of breast cancer, and a lot of times breast lumps are picked up by women themselves, it's easy to pick up a breast lump and go to a surgeon mm -hmm. or go to someone and say that I have a lump. Uh, with cervical cancer, the signs are things that people would shy away to talk about. It's about uh, vaginal bleeding in between cycles or vaginal bleeding after menopause. And a lot of times women are very shy to talk about vaginal bleeding, especially after the menopausal age. So I think we need to break that barrier of conversation. And uh, conversations like these mm -hmm. uh, on media and on social media will really help uh, make an entire ecosystem where people are open to talking about symptoms and getting themselves screened. All right, Dr. Tripti Gilada, we leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Amit Varma, we leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. We are, See, it is actor Poonam Pandey, whose death today has spurred us to have this conversation. Again, there are many question marks about whether Poonam Pandey has actually died, whether this is a publicity stunt. Uh, there are many netizens asking, where is the funeral? Where is the body? Etc. Etc. I simply don't know the truth, dear viewers. I simply don't know the truth. Uh, we've tried to find out. People in her team are not speaking. There are no relatives who are willing to speak, so we don't know what the truth is. One thing we know. The truth is that cervical cancer is something that needs to be screened. It's very important. The truth also is that if you have a girl at home or a boy at home between the ages of 9 to 14, 9 to 26, Please go and get them vaccinated against cervical cancer. Don't wait for the government of India to do it. If you have the money on your own, please go to a hospital and do it. The government says it is going to start an immunization program in any case soon. We leave it there for the moment. Dr. Gilada, Dr. Varma, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, with that, I'm shifting our focus now to the big political story uh, that has been playing out in the national capital. That's in just a bit. A quick break.